Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall be proving in that internal direct product is isomorphic to external direct product. So here is the result with us. It states that if you have the inner product, which is written as H1, H2 cross up to Hn, this would be isomorphic to the external direct product of H1, H2, H3 and so on up to Hn. So that means if G is some group and it is the internal direct product of finite number of subgroups H1, H2 and so on up to Hn, then we have to prove that G is isomorphic to the external direct product of these subgroups, right? So this is the proof. So we'll be proving this result in two parts. In the first part, we'll be making, uh, we'll be showing that all the conditions of this internal product are satisfied, right? And uh, uh, this is a unique way to write it and then in the second part we'll be proving this isomorphism correct so let's proceed with the first part here in the first part we assume that g is given to be the internal direct product of these subgroups h1 h2 h3 and so on up to hn right and we assume that all of them h1 h2 h3 up to hn are normal subgroups of the group g right if they are normal subgroups so it they would also satisfy the condition of normal subgroup right so here we'll make use of this property to prove that any two elements taken from different subgroups would commute so what we do we take two different elements small h1 and small hj small hi and small hj taken from two different subgroups capital hi and capital j right where i and j subscripts they are different so that means we are talking about different subgroups so next we take some element xi uh, sorry hi hj hi inverse hj inverse now you can make use of associative property here because they are portions of subgroups right so you can uh, club the, the first three in one bracket and the other as such so that now you see hi has been taken from capital hi subgroup hj has been taken from capital j subgroup and we are now taking the inverse hi inverse of this this is again taken from hi so the whole of this would be present in what it would be present in hj by the property of normal subgroup and this hj inverse is as such right now you can make use of coset property here some element a, a hj inverse right this is also some element of the group right into hj which is the subgroup so this would be equal to hj if whenever this hj inverse is present in hj and you know because you have considered hj to be a part of capital hj subgroup then hj inverse would also be a part of capital hj subgroup hence uh, you can write it like this so from here you can clearly see that this element is present in hj correct similarly we can uh, show that the same element is present in hi how now you can club up the last three elements together if you do so this is present in h capital hj this is also present in capital hj being the inverse of this element and this is present in capital hi hence all the three elements are now present in capital hi because hi is a normal subgroup hence uh, now this becomes a coset and if hi belongs to capital hi this we have assumed then both of them would be equal to each other right this according to the properties of coset so from here you can see that this element is present in hj and the same element is present in hi as well hence this element would be present in the intersection of hi with hj correct so it is present in this intersection and you know by the properties of internal direct product the intersection of any two subgroups is uh, contains only the identity element so this intersection would also contain the identity element hence this element would nothing be but the identity elements hence all uh, they they both are equal to each other now what you can do you can post multiply here first of all with hj on both sides correct so that this and this would uh, nullify each other's effect and then you can uh, multiply whole of this with hi on both sides so that it would again nullify e each other's effect so you will be left with hi hj this would be equal to hj hi hence from here you can see that both the h they commute with each other taken from different subgroups right this is one part this is one thing that we have proved now next we claim that each member of G that can be expressed uniquely in this form 
H1, H2, H3 and so on up to Hn where each Hi has been taken from the subgroup capital Hi. That is, uh, we wanted to prove that there is at least one such representation, right, where we can write uh, the elements in this form. This is actually the condition first for the definition of internal direct product. We wanted to prove this uniqueness, right? Now to prove this uniqueness here, we suppose that the element G could be represented both in this form H1, H2 up to Hn and in the second form as H1 dash, H2 dash and so on up to Hn dash, right? Where all these Hi and Hi dash, they belongs to the subgroup Hi, right? Where I varies from 1 to N. So we wanted to prove that this uh, is the same uh, representation so that means we wanted to prove here that h i is equal to h i dash uh, for each i correct 1 to n so this is our aim here so now we can make use of the fact that h from different h i's they commute with each other if that is so we can make use of uh, make use of it to solve this equation right how because in order to solve this equation you can clearly see what we can do we wanted to solve for hn dash and hn inverse right so your hn dash is here so what you can do you can post multiply both sides with hn inverse correct so they would cancel and hence you will be left with this thing over here uh, hn inverse and this won't be there correct Next, what you uh, you will do here, uh, you can uh, pre-multiply both sides with H1 inverse and H1 inverse dash, H1 dash inverse, right? So that they would cancel each other, right? And you, are, you will be left with this, correct? Next, what you can do, you can pre-multiply both sides with H2 dash inverse. So here you can write H2 dash inverse, correct? So both of them, they would cancel each other and you will be left with this thing. Now what you can do, you can uh, commute the elements. You can write it after this thing, right? So here you, you have such terms and then you keep on doing like this until you obtain the last term, which is this. Hence, this becomes our expression, right? This is simple calculation. We can make use of commutativity and proceed thereafter. This is just pre and uh, post multiplying with the uh, elements we wanted to get rid of. So this becomes our equation. Now from this equation, uh, you can see that because this all uh, H1 H, uh, and H1 dash belongs to capital H1, right? They belongs to capital H2 and so on. They, these belongs to capital Hn. Hence, this element belongs to H1, H2, H3 up to Hn minus 1. Right. And because, you know, the, both of them, they belongs to Hn, hence their combination would also belongs to Hn. Now, this element belongs to this subgroup and this subgroup as well. So it would also belongs to their intersection. Right. And, you know, by the properties of internal direct product, this intersection contains only the identity element within it. Hence, this element should be equal to the identity element. If that is so, what we can do, we can uh, pre uh, we can post multiply with hn on both sides so that the, this would become identity and here hence you would have hn dash is equals to hn from here if that is so so that means uh, if the last element is equal to each other hence our equation uh, this one equation number one now becomes equal to h1 h2 up to we are now going up to hn minus one because this and this would cancel and here we are going up to h dash n minus one so this is our equation after cancelling out hn on both sides now what we can do we can pr uh, repeat our procedure to obtain in a similar fashion we can obtain hn minus one is equals to h dash n minus one and we can continue like this until we finally reach at uh, uh, until finally all the uh, corresponding h i's would be equal to h dash i for each i right if that is so then the member uh, this member g h1 h2 up to hn would be exactly equal to h1 dash h2 dash and so on up to hn dash so from here 
you can clearly see that we can express each element of g uniquely in this form where hi belongs to capital hi correct hence one part of the proof is done we have already talked about this uh, internal direct product now in order to um, associate them we wanted to define an a mapping between them such that that mapping is isomorphism so we have to define phi from g which is uh, which is this uh, internal direct product right from here to the external direct product we have to define a mapping such that it becomes an isomorphism so this is our task here so let's first of all define the mapping and thereafter we in the next video we'll be proving that it is an isomorphism so here you see for this particular fun uh, mapping we define a function g from the internal direct product to the external direct product such that phi of this element now what is this element it is h1 h2 h3 and so on up to hn right this thing you know would be equal to what are the kind of elements present here it would be equal to this n tuple correct now we have to prove that this mapping phi this is one to one this is on to and this is operation preserving right so we'll be doing this in the next video so i hope you understood uh, this much part of the proof well that is it for this video Thank you for watching.